Time for yet another video! <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful outside today. Super, super nice. Welcome to today's video, guys. Today, we're gonna be talking about how cheaply you could possibly sail around the world. So if you're like me, on a budget, you don't have too much money, you're barely making it in life. No, I'm just kidding. But you're basically broke and you still want to go sailing around the world in your own sailboat, what will that cost you if you're cutting as much costs as possible? Okay, let's get to it. So let's start with a boat. You need basically a small boat and uh, I would say 20 to 26, 27 feet will fit in the lowest possible budget when it comes to long distance sailboat. If you check out my latest video, I got a, a list of boats there, three boats, which cost around $2,000, which would definitely fit in the cheapest possible you could get while sailing around the world. So check that out and then come back here. So now you got the boat, a good, small, sturdy boat, which will be able to sail you around the world. So now you just gotta equip it. You need uh, some kind of autopilot, like an electrical one, will run you about $500 and then you could also buy a wind pilot and in this case you need to buy a used wind pilot because the new ones are super expensive so used wind pilot would be about thousand dollars I would say. So now you get autopilot steering let's say all the other equipment on the boat is kind of good you need to add some more like navigational stuff like paper shards some electronic shards for around the world and maybe like an AIS is good to have so a few things like that will add up a couple more thousand dollars so in the end with boat and equipment and everything you would probably end up around five thousand dollars so now the boat is equipped you got everything you're ready to go the route is planned to be the regular one just north and around the equator kind of called the milk run I'm not really sure why it's called a milk run, but maybe it's because they were shipping gold and they wanted to kind of put that in disguise, so they call it the milk run instead of the gold. No, I don't know. But if you guys know why it's called a milk run, write it down in the comments down below. Then when you're off sailing, you're running, everything on the boat is working. The You got a small inboard engine that's working and you got no more cost to to put on the boat at the moment so you just go and then you're gonna be sailing let's let's say you start from the canary islands it's it's a nice place to start your long distance sail so you're basically on the canary islands you're buying a lot of food water stuffing up with diesel for the atlantic crossing over to the caribbean and uh, as soon as you get to the caribbean you're basically going to be able to anchor everywhere you go so the nightly fees will basically be zero and this applies to more or less everywhere you go around the milk run kind of like the Caribbean, French Polynesia, Australia, Indonesia, all these areas you're basically able to anchor all the time so all the nightly fees will be for free then you got the food costs, the food when we were going to the Caribbean we were living quite cheaply it ran us about 100 to 150, let's say 150 dollars per person. So you're going solo sailing at the moment, 150 dollars, boom, perfect. We got maintenance as well. Maintenance is really hard to tell actually, but let's say you're going the traditional following the seasons around the world, which will take you about two years of sailing. And in this time, I would say, maintenance on the engine could be thousand dollars for the whole trip if you if you know how to do some stuff yourself as well you don't need help with everything you could fix the most regular small problems yourself like changing filters changing impeller changing the the driving cord kind of thing and and uh, oil and all that so mostly the like more major problems you need help with yeah thousand thousand uh, dollars in total in two years when it comes to overall 
maintenance of the boat, you don't have that big cost around that because that's quite easy to figure out yourself. Like, if you get a hit something a little bit and you get a little bit of a bump or a scratch on your boat, it's really, really easy to fix that. And most stuff that gets a little bit broken inside, like wood or anything like the toilet or the kitchen or anything, it's probably quite easy for you to fix it yourself. It's not gonna run you that much, but in two years I would say all kind of regular maintenance stuff would run you about $500. In other stuff like rigging sails and stuff like that, you can mostly fix sails and uh, canvas yourself if you got just a regular sailing sewing glove and some threading and some needles and stuff like that so that's gonna be pretty easy to solve yourself with the sails at least temporarily and also some sail tape could be good to have let's say rigging and sails around five hundred dollars in two years when it comes to clearing fees and stuff I would say the usual price for clearing in to any place at least where I went to the Caribbean and all that it was about 20 to 30 dollars for clearing with a pretty small boat and just one or two in the crew so let's say 20 dollars for clearing in which would be you're visiting more or less 20 30 let's say 30 countries on your around the world sale so you got the result right here then in some countries you would need visas to be able to enter, like the US. I think that's like $100 for a B1, B2 visa or something like that. I don't think you need that much more visas in many more countries. If you do, I would say let's add another $200 to the overall cost just to have like overall visa kind of entry fee costs and uh, the Panama Canal. It's not very cheap. I think with a small boat you could get away with $1,000, maybe a little bit more. It's always nice to hire an agent for this, but this is the cheapest possible way to go around. So let's say $1,000 if you do everything yourself for the Panama Canal, I would say maybe 1,500. Yeah, let's say 1,500. In Sweden, it's not mandatory to do a course before you go long distance sailing, but in many countries, there are actually mandatory courses for you to be able to go offshore long distance sailing. So let's add another, I don't know, 500 bucks. Maybe that's too much. 300 bucks to that. Also, you need to register your boat in some way. So that usually is about 100 bucks. One thing that I forgot about before is the dinghy. You gotta have a dinghy to go if you're gonna live on anchor, you gotta have a dinghy. So just a regular PVC dinghy, you gotta row because you're gonna live cheaply. So dinghy would be like $300. That's about all the fixed costs that you get around a long distance sail in a small boat. So now we're just gonna look at all the stuff you wanna do when you're out long distance sailing, like going on restaurants and uh, no, you can't go on restaurants if you're on a real budget, so no restaurants. But just getting around and exploring and doing a lot of fun stuff, like what would that basically cost you overall? When you're going around, you usually want to rent a car every now and then, so car rental for one day per month, you're out for a total 24 months, 30, 40 dollars per car, give or take. Gasoline as well. <laughs> when we were going long distance sailing, we were go usually going with these minibuses that were just bumping around on all these pothole roads and <laughs> going all crazy. Uh, they were really cheap. I think they run about, uh, if you want to go for like 30 minutes riding out into the, the rainforest, I think you had to pay every day you were out basically were around $10 getting back and forth to where you wanted to go. Getting around on your own on all these places is usually quite easy but you gotta be able to just go out there take contact with people and ask around where you gotta go to be able to make your way where you <laughs> where you want to go basically there's usually not that many costs if you just want to go out exploring and enjoy the nature it's usually quite free wherever you go you just gotta respect all the common 
restrictions and rules that they have in that particular area and, so, and as long as you do that it's going to be just going around and having fun and doing all these amazing things which is basically for free most of the time you can go diving on your own from your boat from your dinghy basically that's for free and if you go out in a rainforest or something you just follow the trails and it's it's just quite intuitive usually you just go around and follow the sounds of the waterfalls and get around and talk to people and it's it, all this stuff are just for free and it's not gonna be something that's gonna weigh you down costly in any way when going long distance sailing here the last thing that i didn't mention before would be insurance but it's usually if you have a small older cheaper kind of boats it's usually really hard to get an offshore sailing insurance at least in Sweden, it's really, really hard. It doesn't make any sense really to have an insurance if you get a really cheap boat either. So I would say you only need your personal insurance, which makes sense. So let's add that to the price. Otherwise, there's not actually that many more costs when you're going long distance sailing. It's actually, as long as you have your boat and it's pretty good shape, there's not that much things that you could actually put money on. Usually you just go around in your boat, having fun sailing, meeting a lot of other sailors, exploring islands, mainlands, just doing all these fun stuff that usually doesn't cost anything basically and for me at least that's all what long distance sailing is about just to live with the nature have a good time and don't run around buying all these fancy stuff and living in fancy marinas and just spending a lot of money for me at least doesn't make much sense at all when you're going long distance sailing so you got your boat dinghy wind rudder preferably food diesel engine everything like that and you're just basically sailing around the milk run, through the Panama Canal, everywhere. And the subtotal of that would be this. For two years of sailing, you got this. Usually you're gonna spend a little bit more money than all this, but you don't really have to spend more, which is just amazing. That you could get around the world, live for two years in your own home, travel around, meet a lot of amazing people, see so much amazing nature for such a low price. That's a bit of the reason why I do it. I love the ocean as well, but just to be able to travel cheaply like this, it's just such a privilege that's hard to just look away from. So, I think a lot more people like you sitting over there should Think about going long distance sailing. You don't have to sail around the world, of course, but just do a little bit more long distance sailing now that you know that it's not that hard and it's not that expensive either. So if you're on a budget, if you're basically broke, you can still go long distance sailing without too much hassle around the whole thing. It's not that complicated. So get out there, go sailing, have fun, meet a lot of people. And just just enjoy this amazing world that's we've, that we've been gifted to ourselves. Okay, that's it for today. If you liked the video, give it a big, big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button with a little bell as well. Ring it to get the notifications when the next video is coming up on the tube. And I will see all you guys in the next video. Now have an amazing day. Bye.